Good morning, everyone. It's a chilly morning, but I'm out here exploring a place called Red Gulch Dinosaur Track Site. Apparently there are hundreds of dinosaur tracks or track lines here and over a thousand individual footprints here. They range in size from a few inches to about eight inches. I've been looking around for a few minutes and they're not, they're not very easy to spot. I marked this one with the drone battery so I could come back to it. I think, you know, you've got the three, three toes here. This might be one. This might be another one, again, with the three. This is the left one, the middle one, and the right one. Yeah, I'm kind of struggling here to find more. I've been to several dinosaur track sites before, and usually they're easier than this. Um, maybe it's just too early in the morning for me. I don't know. These tracks were only discovered in 1997. Some locals were out here just wandering around and, and stumbled across this place. And these tracks are 167 million years old, and uh, the experts aren't entirely sure of what animals or what, what dinosaurs, which dinosaurs, made these tracks. There's still apparently some debate about that. I finally found another one, again with the three prongs, the three toes. I know the approximate shape to look for because at the, the parking area in the, in the cement, in the concrete, there are some, some indentations, some, uh, some fake prints uh, that they put there. And so that's, that's kind of what I'm on the lookout for versus prints that are just like kind of round or something like that. Uh, those gave a pretty good idea of, of the shape that I'm trying to identify and and mostly failing here. This used to be a section of sandy tidal flats when the dinosaurs walked across it. And so it's, it's rippled, it's mottled, it's hard. Again, it's just hard to, hard to distinguish anything. I think we might have found all we're gonna find here. There's quite the production here. There's this big boardwalk area and viewing platform, that covered pavilion thing over there, a bunch of signs, there are picnic tables, there's uh, a bathroom over there, a lot going on at this site. And yeah, this is what I was talking about, the little impressions in the path here. And these definitely helped, helped me know what I was looking for. I think that if my life depended on it, you know, with a gun to my head, I maybe could have found four tracks out there of the 1,100 that are reportedly out there. But still a fun stop, still worth, worth the, the stop if you are in the area. And I am in this area for one other reason. There's a hike that I want to do here that I, I, saw, I saw a picture of this thing uh, a year or two ago, and I had never seen it before. It looked like a, a really fun... Uh, Thing to try to hike to and so that's the plan for today. Roads go kind of close to it but I'm in the RAV4 on this trip. I'm not in the Land Cruiser and so I'm not going to be doing any crazy off-roading. We'll see how far I can get on those little side dirt roads. There is a main gravel road out here that's great that any car can go down. Any car can make it to this spot but to go to the, the spot that I'm trying to hike to that'll take a little bit of uh, of doing. So let's get back in the car and see exactly how close we can get. Okay, I think this is about as far as I can go. The road here dips down and gets pretty rutted and rough. But look at this beautiful scenery, this beautiful country. Nice views of the southern end of the Bighorn Mountains, off in the distance with snow on them, and beautiful red, earthed badlands in the medium ground there, in the middle distance. Uh, the plan is to follow this road as it continues on over in this direction. You can see, see this road here, that's where I'm going. Probably going around the corner here. My guess is that I have three or four miles of hiking to do. One thing I haven't yet mentioned is that today is Eclipse Day. 
So today is the day of the annular solar eclipse for 2023. And uh, I'm not in the, in the path of totality or, or whatever it's called. It's not going to be completely obscured. Uh, but the, the moon will obscure about 70% of the sun, I think. And I have my, my eclipse glasses. So what that means is that I can actually zoom in. And I can put the glasses over the lens. And you can see that the eclipse is just starting. Isn't that cool? We'll check in periodically as we hike here. It's about 25 minutes later. Let's check in on the eclipse. Nice shape, good crescent. You can see the moon obscuring, well, like a quarter, a third of the sun there. Very cool. We'll check in again in another 20 minutes or so. I finally gotten a good look at the thing that I've come here to, to climb. And it's this, this is called Devil's Leap. Let me show you what it looks like up close and personal. That is where we're going. I think at first I'll go up to the base of it and then hopefully I can go around the side and get up to the top. I don't know, we'll see. Time for another eclipse check-in. We've got a nice big chunk of the sun taken out now. Put the glasses over the lens. There we go, you see that? It's a little crescent now. And I don't know if it'll really come through in the video, but the, the amount of daylight is definitely different from where it should be. The eclipse is definitely affecting the shadows and the, the light level here. Kind of interesting, a little bit eerie. I remember the same thing happening during that big eclipse a, a handful of years ago. Uh, it's not quite like that, but I think we're, I think we're getting there. It's about 10.30 in the morning, and I think the eclipse is about as good as it's going to get. I think the sun is about as covered as it's going to get where I am in this part of the country. Let's put the glasses over it. Beautiful sliver of the sun there. That's just awesome. And I just spotted some white shapes off in the distance. I can't, I can't tell what they are. I think they're pronghorn. I think we have, yep. Okay, they are animals. They are moving. I couldn't tell. They weren't moving before. I think they're pronghorn. Ooh, I had to <laughs> climb onto a little hill here to get a, a better view to see what the land around here is doing and see how exactly I want to access Old Devil's Leap over there. And I was gonna go further to the right, go around this way, and then uh, come at the formation from this side. But I think from here, I'm just gonna go straight there. And that means, uh, that means that I'm gonna have to go up and over this little hill uh, between here and there, but I think that's okay. It was quite the hike to get here, guys. I'm at the base of Devil's Leap. This is a 500 foot high cliff. If you measure from the gullies down there, from the base of the, of the slope, it's about 700 feet from there to the top of this thing. Pretty impressive, pretty cool. It took about two hours to get here. Uh, the, the eclipse is, is over. 
and uh, I'm ready for a break and ready for a snack before I scale this beast and try to get to the actual top. Now, I'm not going to be climbing the cliffs. Uh, this is definitely, definitely rock climbing territory. I'm going to go around one of the sides and go up uh, one of the slopes around to the top that way. I think probably over in this direction, although I think this way is also doable. I don't even know what snacks I have in my backpack. I don't think I actively packed anything, but I usually have a couple of edible something or another's in here. Okay, I've got some Belvita crunchy breakfast biscuits, cinnamon brown sugar. These are a staple of my trips. I think that might, oh no, there is one more thing. And a lemon poppy seed bobo bar, also something I frequently have with me. It's a beautiful day, absolutely gorgeous. It's rare in the open spaces of Wyoming for there to not be any wind. And it's a completely still and windless day. It's glorious. Cheers. Well, guys, I knew that this would be worth coming to. I've seen a couple pictures of it. There isn't a lot of information about this place online, by the way. It's, it's pretty obscure. I knew this would be cool. I didn't know it would be this amazing. I am at a loss for words here. I mean, the position of this place. It's, it's this pillar of rock connected with a, a narrow causeway, almost, to the, the mesa behind me. And it is unbelievable up here. I feel like I'm, I mean, this, this is Pride Rock. This is the ultimate pulpit. This is just a, a remarkable, remarkable place. I don't want to get too close to the edge. I think you can probably understand why, but uh, it is a sheer 500 foot drop just over that edge. And I parked from over, or I came from over here. I parked on the other side of these these mountains here. You can see a little bit of the dirt. Let's see, where is it? A little bit of the dirt road I came in on over here and then again over here. I followed that until I got to about here and then I went over these low hills to the base of the pillar. This took longer than I thought it would. It took about two and a half hours to get out here and so I'm gonna be out here for five hours and uh, I still have many hours of driving to do today. I'm gonna get into Montana today, at least that was the plan. Once I get back to the car and everything and, and get back onto the main highway, I don't know how much time I'll still have left. Uh, I think I might be able to squeeze in a few hours of driving until it gets dark, but I don't know, we'll have to see. But 
As far as Devil's Leap goes, this is <laughs> this is one of those places that uh, I mean, it's just a gem. What a cool spot. There is another way to hike here, actually. Uh, you can actually hike here from over there, and I think it's a little bit shorter and easier, but I wanted to hike from where I did because I wanted to be able to, to get the view of this thing from that direction. When you come at it from over here, you don't get it in profile. You don't get to see that huge cliff, the, the big pillar. When you come at it from over there, you just, you know, it's just like the the end of a point on a long rise and I, I wanted a bit more drama and man I think we got that. So so cool. I'm gonna gonna relax up here a little bit. I ate my bobo bar but I still have my little breakfast biscuit things and so I'll have those and uh, have some water and then continue to just soak in these last days of warmth. You know it's gonna be cold here pretty soon. Today it's probably 60 degrees you know, just perfect weather, and so it's not going to be like this much longer this year. So, I'll see you guys somewhere back on the road, maybe in Montana, maybe around here. I don't know, I'll worry about that later. For now, it's time to just enjoy being in a spectacular, spectacular place. This campsite is fairly spectacularly situated, right on the edge of a little, I guess you'd call this a valley, with colorful badlands and the setting sun lighting up the bighorns over there. Fun spot. And you might have guessed that no, I'm not in Montana by the time I got back to the car. And by the way, the hike back was fine. It took like an hour and a half, wasn't, wasn't bad at all. But by the time I got back, I just didn't feel like driving six hours, uh, you know, into the night, finding a campsite in the dark in Southwestern Montana. So I thought, you know what? I'm gonna spend another night here. Uh, tomorrow I'll go fishing up in the mountains. I'll use tomorrow sort of as a rest day. And I'll make my way leisurely across Montana to southwestern Montana uh, in the afternoon sometime. And since getting back to the car, I've basically just been hanging out in this area, driving around here out in the, the wildlands, and then also I drove into town, into Grable. I went to the grocery store there and got a, a sub sandwich from the deli for dinner, and uh, decided to come back out this way, find a campsite. This is the same general area that I camped in in the previous video, which would be last night for me. It was a fun day. We started off with some dinosaur tracks, and then we had an eclipse, and then we climbed up the, the Devil's Leap, and I felt like I was, I felt like I was on an altar of sacrifice. Like I was offering myself up to the gods as, as an offering. A uh, pretty wild place up there. I encourage you guys to go check that out if you're in the area. And uh, I'm gonna, Hop in the car for the rest of the night. I'm gonna sleep in the RAV4 tonight, of course. And uh, thanks again for watching, guys. Let me know what you think. Let me know what your favorite part was. Let me know if you have any questions. I'll see you in the next one. Be sure to check out Adventure Know How, my new site, where you can gain access to a map of all of my free campsites, plus monthly bonus videos that you won't find anywhere else. Learn more at adventureknowhow.com. And for links to everything else SUV RVing related, visit suvrving.com. Links to these sites and more will be in the video description.